on today's episode is a life pull 4 battery for you what it, why is it better than a lead acid is it worth the money we're going to compare the two today lithium ion phosphate life pull 4 batteries and versus the lead acid battery that's right we're going to do this and we're going to discuss all sorts of stuff is it worth the price that's a good one right will life pull battery work for you hmm that's what we want to really dig down and find out why there is a difference and why one's better all right and we're gonna do a little bit of mumble jumble talk about ohm's law you guys just don't don't freak out we're gonna i'm gonna be briefly talking about ohm's law and why it matters to what kind of battery you choose very important very important <laughs> let's go and show the differences between a lead acid and a life pull four stay tuned Will it work for you? Well, we got sort of a slideshow here of, yes, they're better batteries, traditional lead acids, cheaper and all that. But why? Why is it cheaper for lead acid or is it really cheaper? Hmm. You guys are gonna be really surprised to find out what I found. It's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. So before we get too started here, as I promised you earlier, I'm gonna talk about Ohm's Law. Now Ohm's Law here, we're gonna to apply to ham radio in this case, which also could apply to your trolling motors, uh, kids toys, all that kind of stuff. The important thing is here, let's use the ICOM 7300, which is a ham radio that's used in the amateur radio world. It's one of the most popular radios out there right now that everybody's using. So to get the maximum 100 watts out of a 7300 manufacturer states that it needs 13.8 volts of dc power what does that mean well when you're below 13.8 you're not truly putting out the 100 watts and what does that mean while well, you're getting less power getting out there so this is why we're doing a comparison between the two batteries because so, this is this is the real kicker right here of voltage and current and ohm's law we're not going to get too into it but this is a scenario if your voltage goes down your current goes up what happens when your current goes up a lot more stress on components it could be in your radio on your connectors everything have you ever had hot terminals on your battery or on the connections it could be because you're running a little bit under voltage and your current is going up think about that we're gonna get back to that right away, guys. So here's the characteristics of the two batteries. Very much out of the gate, you're gonna see, as everybody knows, the LifePo 4 battery has a lot more usable power. And what I mean by usable power, it's above 11.5 volts, a lot longer than a traditional lead acid battery. You can see here on the charts that we have a usable percentages higher, and what does that mean? Your battery will last longer if you don't dive into discharging it as much. If you discharge your battery and charge it and discharge it all the time, that is putting a cycle on your battery. More cycles, less life. So we're gonna get to that in a little bit. Let's move on here. So what is a usable amp hour per weight? I was really curious, compared to a big old lead acid battery and my little tiny LiFo 4 battery, what is usable out of it? You can see on the charts here and, and all the slides I put together, we have a lot more usable power per weight on this battery. And the slides don't lie, you guys. You can look at them here. And if you ever want to, drop by my website. I got mrmuds.com. The full slide's gonna be there for you to look at and check out, or just pause and rewind this video. Feel free to look. So, final comparison on power wise we have basically a life pull 4 is 4.6 times lighter of usable amp hours than lead acid that's a winner for me guys who wants to lug that battery around get yourself something smaller you can see in the picture up there there's a traditional one i pulled out of a, uh, some sort of emergency lighting seriously that thing is heavy as a brick and the other one you wouldn't even know if it's in your pocket right so there's the comparison right there so I'd like to tell you guys right now, thanks for joining me today and take the time to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified when I have new videos out. You guys are gonna love it. And also thank you WattCycle 
for the generous support and sponsorship of my channel and this video to get the word out there how great their batteries are you guys there's links in below the great thing about watt cycle they have distribution centers all over the world so pick the one that's closest to you to avoid those heavy shipping charges and undo taxes and tariffs and brokerage fees get away from that link is in below all right guys let's move on cost comparison between a life pull 4 and a lead acid all right we got four main factors that we're going to go over initial price the lifespan replacement cost over time and efficiency and already talked about usable capacity. Initial cost per amp hour is a lot more for life pull four compared to a lead acid, all right? So you could see up front the charges are, or costs are a lot less, but in the end, you're gonna be paying less for a, for a life pull four. And a life pull four has almost 100% of the usable amp hour. As you guys know, it stays at a voltage above 11.5 a lot longer, which is better for your battery and better for your equipment, which I said could be your radio, your ice augers, your trolling motors, golf cart batteries, all that kind of stuff. You can replace a lead acid battery a lot more times than you could do with one of these other batteries. So think about that, look at that chart. And again, look at that, you guys probably seen DOD, depth of discharge. I was referring to that as um, how far down a battery could be depleted before you have to charge it. So a little fun fact, that's what DOD means. Total cost of ownership over 10 years. This is just a rough basic Google statement here. Um, lead acid costs more in the long run because they replaced them so long, on and on. You see in the charts, right? And efficiency and real world costs. Okay, another slide here. You guys don't get sick of the slides, please. This is all great information that you can look at it later on and see like, hmm, that's, that's why, right? So you lose a lot of efficiency on a lead acid where the life pull four is very efficient. The only thing that would affect a life pull four, in my opinion, is maybe the extreme cold, extreme heat, and they're a little slower to charge but it's all in there to protect the battery. So you guys, why not? It's a winner winner, right? So the final ver verdict, look at all the different comparisons. Look at the winners key. Upfront cost, that's the only way the lead acid is gonna work, right? You can pull it out of your Subaru, maybe get it for free, right? But you got lifespan, weight efficiency, usable capacity, total cost over 10 years is a lot lower. So if you want a cheap long-term solution, lead acid is fine. If you want the best long-term, you don't want to break your back by hauling a big old battery around, choose the Life Pull 4 battery. All right, guys, there's a little bit of break time. There's my Go Kit. That's going to be feature, featured in a future video. I'm using the Watt Cycle 20 amp hour battery, which I put on my custom designed top on top of the battery that has power poles built in all free for you to download and print off yourself and make your own battery box out of a battery <laughs> there we go you guys thanks a lot for joining see you next time don't forget to stop by my sponsor watt cycle check out what they got to have check out my channel and for now 73s and for you guys around ham 73s means goodbye